the Nine Tails Fox, known through folklore as being depicted as a mischievous fox, usually tricking other people with the ability to disguise as a beautiful woman. It is depicted as a familiar sp spirit possessed with magical powers, and this boy is here to steal your soul. Hey guys, welcome back, Orbomb here. Uh, welcome back to some more spooky uploads of TCG. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm trying. I really want to play Nine Tails. I'm trying to think of a way to make it scary. We're playing two foxes today. We are playing Zoark Nine Tails. It's a fox party. The Nine Tails folklore. We are here. Uh, sorry for the cringy intro. Uh, hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're playing Nine Tails today. I, I really like Nine Tails. You guys know that it's my favorite deck right now. It'll probably be my favorite deck until it rotates. To be honest, because I don't know. Nine Tails is up there. It's one of my favorite Pokemon. So. We are here today. <laughs> uh, this deck list has been it's been tested quite a bit. Uh, I really like Nine Tails, so you guys know I play it all the time. I play it a lot IRL too, because it's like one of the only IRL decks I have built, and uh, it's pretty good. It involves a lot of thinking, right? It's one of those decks that are really complicated to run, especially with the meta right now. Guardi is always a problem, but we're gonna I'm gonna show you guys my current deck build. Uh, I'll tell you guys what I change whenever Crimson Invasion comes out, because spoiler alert: the only card you want to add in here maybe is lucamine and i'm i'm currently testing it with lucamine irl to see if i like it <clears throat> but i'm gonna go over my nine tails build and hopefully get a couple of games so first things first we are playing um four vulpix kind of like the bread and butter of this deck being able to use beacon get any two pokemon and put them into your hand uh is so good early game <laughs> it's so good early game it just helps you get set up it's nice to have a deck that kind of is kind of self-sufficient as far as getting the pokemon that you need so Vulpix, always great. Shout out to you, Vulpix. We're playing four Vulpix. And now, uh, it's going to be a little bit weird, but we're playing only two Alolan Ninetales GX and one of the baby Ninetales, uh, the Lumius, Luminous Barrier Ninetales. Now, the reason why I cut out one of the Ninetales is because, I mean, you have a bunch of other attackers, right? You got Zoar, Coco, even Lele to an extent. But more than that, like, Ninetales is just... Like, usually Ninetales are not going to die, right? Between Ice Path, it's really good HP, the fact that they can do spread damage, it's not usually going to die right away. And I also play two Rescue Stretchers um, anyways. I mean, I, I have to play these just because of the, the nature of the deck itself, but like, it helps because you can cut out a Ninetales, it gives you a little bit less clunk in the deck. Uh, and, I mean, Ninetales is overall a good Pokemon. We have Ice Blade, right? 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. It's really good, especially in, con in con conjunction with Tapu Koko, because you can fly and flip early, put 20 damage on the board, putting a bunch of babies in range of Ice Blade, which is really powerful. That can just snipe later. It also helps in your de-evolution process with Espeon, because you will be using Espeon for Miraculous Shine. You have Blizzard Edge, which does 160, which is just a really good number, especially with Choice Band. You can hit 190 with the Choice Band. Um, discard two energy from this Pokemon. You just, discard, you just you just discard your DC. It's not a big deal. And then you have Ice Path GX, such a beautiful GX attack. Move all damage counters from this Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon. So you essentially fully heal yourself while putting your damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon. And most of the time, knocking out your opponent's Pokemon. When you have 210 HP, it makes it really, really easy to pull it off. So uh, that's the that's the Nine Tails, and then Baby Nine Tails came out. Alola Nine Tails with Luminous Barrier prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to your Pokemon done to this Pokemon by your opponent's Pokemon GX or EX. There's a lot of decks that just can't deal with this card, and um, and there's a lot of other decks that have to go out of their way to deal with this card. So either way, putting this Pokemon down is always really useful. Uh, against Guardi, they're forced to dig out their Gallade, which is another Pokemon that's going to have a hard time knocking out this Nine Tails. And uh, they also have to de dedicate energies to that Pokemon, which means less energies on their Gardevoir, so they cannot deal with his Gardevoirs easily. And this, once again, Aur Aurora Beam is just good. 80 damage. It's good for de-evolution as well, because it puts everything in range, like Curly is and stuff like that, to being knocked out by de-evolution. And it's just a nice Pokemon to sit behind while you set up in the back. You know, honestly, I was thinking about it the other day, right? I was thinking about putting a Shining Celebi in here, just because I want to have this in the active and be able to constantly use Beacon. There's, realistically, you can't do it because there's not a lot of bench space. But it was I was, in the back of my mind, I was like, this could be genius. <laughs> I, had the, I had the gears turned in my head, you know what I'm saying? So if you want to try that out, let me know. Um, <clears throat> that's the Nine Tails line. We're also playing Zoark, a 2-2 split. I got to play the other Zoro I keep forgetting. Uh, here we go. Yo, yeah, well, you play this Zorua just because just because uh, it has Ram. It's the only one that can essentially attack in this deck since you don't play any Dark Energies. 60 HP, the best artwork ever, and does Ram for 20s, whatever. It's just an option. 
And then you have Zorak GX. I like Zorak GX a lot in this deck list because a lot of the time you, you have a couple of options, right? You have Tapu Koko to put spread damage on the board. You can put a little bit of spread damage here and there with a low and nine tails GX. But with this, you get yourself a really good beat stick in the beginning of the game, hitting for 80, 100, 120, 150 with a choice ban. Uh, really, really, really early in the game as well. So I'm a huge fan of Zorak. It has trade, which once again, consistency. I like this over Octillery. Uh, I think I like this over Oranguru. I almost considered putting in a one of Oranguru in this deck though, but trade is just so good. Uh, it, the only thing that's annoying about it is that it gives your Gallade an option. Like it, Gallade now has an attacking option, which is annoying, and is still a GX. It's still a GX attacker. So if your opponent knocks it out, they're taking two prizes. But Zoark is still relatively good in this deck. Being able to trade is really good because now you can just put water energies in the discard pile on your own whenever you want, so you can activate Aqua Patch. Is the main reason why I'm playing trade over anything else. Uh, we have Rhydus beating. Does 20 damage? Does 20 damage for each of your? Pokemon in play. So if you have a full field, one in the active, five on the bench, you're doing 120, 150 with choice ban, 170 with Kikui. And that just makes Kikui even better in this deck than it was before. Because uh, as you can see, Blizzard Edge is 160 with Kikui, it's 180, right? Choice ban, you're doing 210. 210 knocks out Galissapods and knocks out Ninetales Mirror. And after one flying flip, knocks out Guardies as well. So you have a lot of a lot of openings to getting knockouts when you play Kikui. That's why I'm playing two of Kikui's. Almost want to play a three of, but we'll see what happens. There's so many things in this deck, as far as numbers go, that you can easily change to your own preference. And like, it would be probably just as good depending on your play style. Um, that's why I like this deck so much. Like there's so many, like I'm constantly changing nine tails, constantly changing nine tails. And I always love it. So as you can see, Trickster GX is a cool GX attack, but we're not gonna be able to use it. So we're not no worry, no worry in talking about it. Two Tapu Koko. I honestly don't think you should play any less than two. If anything, just for the free retreat, just because you're gonna be Guzmaing so that you can Aqua Patch, then you can retreat back into your Nine Tails to attack. So having free retreat in this deck is super good. I am currently playing three Flowstones because it is that useful in this deck. I will tell you right now though that if I were to, whenever Crimson Invasion comes out, I'm either dropping one Flowstone. Or enhance hammer all together to play lucamine i have to test which one i like the most uh i have to play a lot of games but i'll talk about lucamine at the end of the, at the end of the deck profile uh, i'm playing of course two top lele for energy drive and the dross and the supporter stuff miraculous shine is good for de-evolution uh wonder tag that's what it's called yeah and you know, i'm only playing two Re you could play three but realistically you're never going to use three once again you have to have the bench space you want to have two or three vulpix down you want to have one or two azorba down Kapu Koko always down for sure. And then you want to keep your bench space open for an extra top of Lele, things like that. So, uh, you know, you could play three. I could help you, but between trade, I'm pretty comfortable just playing two. Four Aqua Patches because it's broken. I am playing one Enhanced Hammer. In theory, it does help you in your Glyspod matchup and your uh, Gardevoir matchup. So I am going to be playing a one of to see how I like it. Uh, two Field Blowers. Uh, ability Lock is kind of annoying, even though it's not the most annoying. Having this turned off is really bad, and having trade turned off is really bad because you can find yourselves in a lot of really precarious situations if you can't draw a lot. Two stretchers, you probably will be sycamoring, trading, things like that, uh, losing Pokemon. And having the two stretchers is really good because sometimes you want to be able to get Espeon whenever you need it, um, put the Zoroas back, Zoroax back into your hand, maybe shuffle Pokemon back in the deck so you don't deck out. Cocos are always really, really good to have. You have options with Rescue Stretcher. Um, it also helps you not deck out too, which is why Rescue Stretcher is so good. Four Ultra Balls. Uh, one Bridget. <clears throat> I know everybody tells me to play two. I'm not playing two. I'm only playing one. I got to put that for trade. Apparently I have five, so I can actually get rid of one of them. Uh, three Guzmas. I really want to play four, but I can't I can't bring myself to do it. Between Sniping, De-Evolving, de Beat Stick, Tapu Koko, I think I'm okay with just three. And... The reason why I'm playing three as well, or not, maybe not now, but in the future, is like Lusami is just so good, guys. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, one Mallow. Because I'm playing the Zoark, I like the one of Mallow. I've tried two. Two actually got in the way a lot of the time. Um, one is just perfect. Because even if you do lose the Mallow early game, it's whatever. Because it's, it's it doesn't matter too much. But if you can pull it off mid to late game, or even early game to help you set up your board with trades, it's always so... Like, there's not a time. There's barely a time whenever Mallow's useless. The only time it's not useful is whenever Zoark's out of the field. But every time you have Zoark, Mallow's pretty useful. So, I like Mallow. 
I'm playing three ends, two Kukui's, and three Sycamores. Unfortunately, you can't, like, I don't know. Sycamore is cool in this deck, but it's not the best just because you have a lot of pieces you don't want to throw away. Uh, four ends would be good if you want to try out four ends, but just because of, like, the nature of the deck, I don't want to play more ends than I have to. Uh, <clears throat> plus, there's so many, so much deck space you need to have in this deck. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, this is the kind of deck that if I had 65 cards, it would be the perfect deck list. I would play, like, one extra N, one extra Sycamore, for sure. I'd play one extra Guzma. Um, I'd probably play uh, one extra Choice Band, and maybe even one extra Flow Zone. If I had, like, 65 cards, that would be the ideal deck list, right? But, unfortunately, that's not how we're going to work, so whatever. <laughs> Three Choice Bands, of course. Uh, choice Bands are super good. I want to play four, but I have to make cuts somewhere. Same, same with the Guzma situation. Three Float Stones, four DCEs, and eight Water Energies. I know a lot of people are going to tell me drop Float Stones. I I want you to try the deck with three Float Stones and tell me afterwards you want to drop Float Stones. It's so important. So, so important in this deck to constantly be able to have your Nine Tails in the bench and then make them active. In order to do that, you need to have free retreat. You're not always going to have Cocos down. Cocos are sometimes a liability to have down because you give your opponent free prizes and you never want to give your opponent free prizes. Sometimes you want to have these high HP Pokemon down to tank a hit. Um, and like Zorak is a two retreat cost. You don't want to waste DCEs to retreat. You don't want to waste energies to retreat. En attaching energies for the turn is always super important and you want to make sure you attach on the right Pokemon. So float stones, even on Pokemon that have a one retreat cost are so important just so you can attach in the right place every turn. Um, but anyways, that's gonna be the deck list, guys. I talked for a long time this time. It's one of my favorite decks, uh, to be fair. Hopefully, nothing happens to the video footage because that'd be kind of annoying. But re regardless, um, we'll be back. We'll just go ahead and get in a couple of games. I did make changes. Uh, I do not want to do this. Yes. Hopefully, I remember to cut things out because I know this video is gonna be a little bit longer than usual. But in order for me to make it shorter, I have to make a lot of cuts. So, yikes. <clears throat> Cause like if I uh, if I don't if I don't make the cuts, then it takes like three hours to render. Here it is. Oh, okay, this is expanded. That explains a lot. Ah, good morning. All right. Let's get this money. We are here playing. It looks like either either Tapu Bulu or Galissapod. I'm pretty scared of the Tapu Bulu matchup because Tapu Bulu can Oko you with choice bands. Which is terrifying. Being Okoed is like the worst thing ever for uh, Ninetales decks. Just because you can't really afford it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lead this so that I can use some beacons instead of going second. Going first or second is really good in this deck. First means you get to evolve faster, but second means you get beacon. You get beacon love right away. And hopefully you can get a bunch of uh, Vulpixes out early game. So yeah, it looks like my opponent's playing Glisspot. Glisspot's not as bad as a, of a matchup. They're pretty scared to attack the Vulpix. If I can avoid playing down Lele's too, they get it takes a lot for them to get easy prizes. And if I can get a bunch of trades active, ooh, it's going to be nice. Uh, yeah, but if it, if they get ability lock, it's kind of it's kind of awkward as well. So I got to keep that in mind. I don't know what I want to do this turn. Like, I kind of want a Sycamore, but I don't want to lose DCE or Aqua Patch or Kukui because they're all super important in this match. Uh, so I'm probably just going to Beacon to get a couple of Vulpixes and use Zoark as an early game beat stick. Maybe. Especially if he can't retreat. I guess we can find out next turn though, right? Because, like, attacking with Zoark isn't the best in this deck because it doesn't really get you much of anywhere. Oh, we have so many Sycamores in hand as well. Um, I guess I have Guzma if I need to, which will be good for Zoark. I don't. I don't want. They know. I know they play four of Guzma, so I'm just gonna go ahead and Beacon here to get a uh, Vulpix. Vulpix. I think I can also get Lele to get an N. 
But I don't mind Guzmaning just because I have two Kikuis in the deck. Let's see what's prized. Um, we have both the... Uh, okay, we got we got a lot of stuff, actually. We have our last Sycamore in the deck, which is good. So even if I do Sycamore, I still have a majority of my cards. I have all my DCEs. I think I have two Water Energies prized. I was taking a quick look because it doesn't really matter too much. We have a Coco prize as well. I could put a Coco in my hand. Coco in my hand isn't a bad idea, but having two Vulpixes down is just so good. I'm going to go ahead and just fill up my field. Couldn't get a turn one Bridget, but that's fine. You don't really need turn one Bridget's a lot in this deck. That's why I only play a one of. My opponent ends me. That's okay. Because I get to preserve my Sycamores and Kikuis and stuff like that. And Aqua Patch. And he's going to Ace Roll. I see. So he doesn't even evolve yet. He's just going to Ace Roll. Well, I guess that's fair because he can go into Coco. Attach, attach the Rainbow. So the Rainbow is good for me. This is a little bit awkward though. We get we do get to, we do get a knockout if we, if we top deck one more Pokemon. And we have an N, which is just gorgeous. We need a Floatstone here as well. So we need a couple of things here. But the end is beautiful because we get to save a lot of our cards. I know we give him an extra card, but just ending right now is so nice. Unfortunately, we whiff a lot of other things. But we can go ahead and trade first, see if I can get a Floatstone. Because we have Ultra Ball in our hands, so we can actually get another Pokemon if we need it. But we whiff the Floatstone. Um, I can get another Zoark though, so let me go ahead and get another Zoark. The Field Blower is not the most useful. I mean, it does give me abilities again, which is really good. Do I drop? I don't want to drop an N ever. I don't want to drop too many energies though. I'm going to drop the Field Blower just because you play a two of count. I don't want to drop too many cards I don't need to, like Guzmas and Sycamore and N's. These are all super useful this game. So if I can. I don't know. I need like a Pokemon and a Floatstone here. Okay, we almost got it, but unfortunately we did not. So I'm going to go ahead and Beacon. We're going to get Coco and uh, Ninetales here. And we can save Baby Ninetales. I don't want to show it to him yet, even though it's fairly obvious that I run it. But then this will get these will this will get knockouts really really easily. And we don't have too many items down there, just two. We're not going to have too many items in the deck. It's fairly, it's fairly easy for us to control our item count. He's going to NS, which is fine. Once again, like the this is this is a thing that happens to me a lot. Even though it shouldn't, right? I don't play that many sports. It's not like I play a 4-4 four, four line of these. But I end up getting them a lot early game, which is really annoying. Okay, this is good. This is not bad at all. We still don't have Aqua Patches yet, and I hate that we're losing Kikui. But Kikui actually gets us a knockout here, which is good. Um... Yeah, this is pretty decent. I don't want to evolve this one into that. Let me do this. If I can get a water energy over other energies, that'd be really good. I don't want to lose Choice Band. Choice Band's actually super clutch. I get, I'm okay with losing Sycamore. At least one. Let's see if I can get like a water energy or a Floatstone. I keep getting DCEs, man. Like usually that's a good thing, but right now it's not the best. I don't, I want to knock this out. My chances are looking less and less though. I might have to actually stick more. We'll trade again. Uh, I'm, I guess I'll trade. I'm losing, see this is what I mean though. We lose too many draw supporters in the game, which is why Lucy means so good, right? Because this deck is actually super self-sufficient as you can see. We can actually play Kikui now and get a knockout here. And we're not in range of anything yet, except for, I guess, are we in range of 180? We are in range of 180, which is whatever. Like, if he, he doesn't have two energy, he doesn't have an energy on a Wimpod yet, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. We got Stretcher as well. I mean, we have a lot of good stuff right now. And we have Mallow for next turn. Mallow does get us pretty much ready to get any knockout we want with Ninetales, which is really good. We got Choice Band in hand and Aqua Patches that we can get off, the, uh, off of the Mallow, so... There's our E-Hammer, which is actually super clutch in this match. So uh, we're going to abuse that to the best of our abilities. He didn't ability lock us either, so our trades are just live. <clears throat> this gets another knockout because uh, we have Lele in hand, and we can just use the Lele to get whatever we need. This, I'm going to get rid of this energy because the, the, the sooner I can get rid of these... Uh, Rainbow, these energy attachments for the turn, the better. Since he's not playing grass, he's even weaker to like this variant of the deck. But he can only do like so much to us right now. Once he can only do 
20 damage because of resistance. Which, in f to be fair, is pretty scary. Because if he attacked us with a Galissapod next turn, we can get knocked out. But he has nothing with free retreat right now. So he has to keep that in mind as well. The Field Blower is a little bit obnoxious. Uh, but we have two other float zones in the deck. This is what I mean. Like, you always want to have a free retreater on your deck. Um, in your deck. So, hopefully I can find a Coco I can put down soon. Uh, but and look, I keep getting DCEs. Like, usually that's a bad thing, but like, or usually that's a good thing, but right now it's just not the best. I'll attach this here, because it does the work, I guess. All I need is a Pokemon. Do I play down to Lele? Or do I try to get Ultra? I mean, I don't want to trade anything right now at all. I don't want to play down the Lele either, though, <laughs> to be completely honest. But I don't, mm, there's not too many, too many things on my bench. I, I don't, I care if I lose. Um, and we're, we're pretty ahead right now, so I'm going to go ahead and play the Lele. We can get a supporter for the future. We'll get Guzma to scare my opponent. I could also get Kikui. That also scares my opponent because Choice Band will get knockouts. But I'm not going to be using these supporters anytime soon. What do I have in my hand right now? I have Sycamore in my hand. Um... I'll get Guzma. See, it's awkward though, because I'm running really low on supporters and I shouldn't be. But whatever. Uh, I could Guzma, but I'm going to go ahead and get my knockout here since I have a full bench anyways. I have Guzma to get knockouts next turn. There's my top of Coco that was prized. I mean, it's not a big deal. I want to knock this out because I don't want to be ability locked. Because this ability is really nice. And there it is. Okay, so I'm probably going to Guzma that out next turn. If I had a Float Stone down, it'd be even better. I guess I can get it off the Mallow, but if he ability locks me, it's I can't really get it off the Mallow. So he needs Float Stone into a uh, Glisspot attack with a Choice Band and knock me out. He did attach a Grass Energy, so I'm going to get knocked out here most likely. I have another Zoark just chilling right here to attack with if I need to. He's going to end. As long as he doesn't get ability lock, I can actually trade and just get my hand back fairly easily. There's my Coco, Glisspod, Choice Band, uh, Stretcher as well. Which is not the most useful thing in the world, but like it's something. Uh, Stretcher would be cool if I had a Lele in the discard pile. Because I can get Kikui, because I have Choice Band. Or I can even get Mallow. He does get the Float Stone, which is really obnoxious. Um, so now I have to think about how I'm going to approach this. 180 does not knock me out. So I can actually go into this and just start sniping the bench. This do you see what I mean though with like the free retreat thing? That's why I'm playing the choice the choice bands. Um, I can play Coco down now though. I don't really want to, but I'm ability locked, so it doesn't really matter too much what I do. I don't have any water energies yet. It's really obnoxious actually. Don't disconnect on me, please. Please and thank you. Please don't do this. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and just Ice Blade. Do I Ice Blade this or do I Ice Blade this? This can be knocked out with Choice Band Kikui. I'm going to Ice Blade the bench. I need water energies. It's not ideal. I'm afraid of Ace of Rolls, which is why I'm just doing the bench one because the bench one is not as much of a threat as the active one because if you ace rolls the active one then you can attack me with the bench one how many items do we have down right now one two three four only four he's gonna guzma he's gonna knock this one out it's annoying but it's not the worst thing in the world we we can't really use this one anymore since we don't can't use our field blower. We have one field blower in the we have one field blower in the deck still. That's why I play a two of count. Uh, but right now we don't have it. I hate I hate that I lost a field blower. But like I don't know. I need I need cards, and that's the thing with Ninetales, right? You need cards. Sometimes it runs beautifully, and then other times you just need too many cards. But luckily he put this in the discard pile, which means if I can draw any of my draw supporters, which I only have, I have two sycamores left actually, so I could actually abuse that somehow. Uh, speaking of which, okay, let's go ahead and abuse our Sycamore then. 
Uh, I'm going to get the other nine tails back into my hand. Do I get the Vulpix back, or should I just put the Zoroark back? I think I will put the Zoroark back. I think I'll just put all the Pokemon back. It's not ideal, but it's something. We can't Choice Band Kikui for Knockout this turn, because uh, Choice Band's only going to do 190. So I probably will be attacking with Coco, just because da spread damage is good damage. I hate that I have more items down there, though, but I mean, I'm going to stick more anyways. Might as well use it before I lose it. How many items is that now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's 120 damage. 120 damage isn't that bad. 150 with Choice Band. He doesn't get any knockouts yet, so we're okay. There's our Aqua Patches, and here's where things get scary, right? Uh, we whiffed Energy. And there's not really a point. We have Flow Stone over Choice Band. Um, I don't see him getting a knockout. I don't see him getting a knockout. So he has to fear knockout potential. I'll play the one. I don't think I'll attach though. I think I'll preserve everything else in my hand. See, these are all the things I want earlier in the game. Well, not the aqua patches, but everything else. Do I attach? Do I attach the baby tails? How many choices? How many DCs are left? We have one on the active, two in this card. There's only one left and one DC left. So maybe attacking the Zoark isn't a bad idea. I'm gonna attack the Zoark. Attach the Zoark. Um, we can Ice Blade the active. It's fairly easy for me to win this game, I think. He needs the Ace Roller now. I attach to this and attack me with that, but then I can knock this out. So he has two of these things ready to be knocked out here. Coco's scary. I don't want to knock out the Coco, but he's probably going to give me the Coco. Yeah, there's the Ace Rolla. Does he have a DC in hand? Oh, he's not going to give me the Coco? I guess he's thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, he's going to attack me with this, which means I get a knockout. Uh, unfortunately, he's hitting me for 150. I guess we can Ice Path for knockout here. Because if he hits me for 150, that's 170, and that is enough to knock this out. So I will go ahead and Ice Path here. Because he's given me the perfect opportunity to, so might as well abuse it. <clears throat> so now I'm fully healed, and I can just get a knockout next turn. Just another Vulpix, and there's my Guzma. So that pretty much guarantees game for me, I think. Um, if I had Field Blower, it'd be beautiful, because I can get Kikui and then win the game pretty much. But um, having Guzma, just having another Guzma ready is so good. <laughs> it's just so good. 150 into 100 damage is pretty scary though. So I have to I have to think like what are my other options here? Cause I could just Guzma this for game if he doesn't get a knockout since he didn't sick and warm me. So I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. I was just thinking that like maybe he would end me, but I guess not. I just I guess I just kinda win. So I have Guzma now. Unless he well even if he field blows, I have another choice man in hand. So that's GG. Alright, so nine tails coming through. This is a this is a weird matchup, right? Because it's like kind of good, but only if you can pull things off. I didn't even I never I didn't get a Kikui. I did get one Kikui knockout with Zoark. So you guys got to see how useful Zoark is at the very least. Zoark can get you knockouts, and Kikui also helps Zoark as well. So it's pretty nice. And this is what I mean, like Guzmas and things like that are super useful in this matchup because you can Aqua Patch right here, and that's why you want to free retreat at all times. So we can just get our knockout here. Tell him we'll play it. Uh, we'll play it. Oh, he's just gonna forfeit, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, there's there's an example of what I mean. Like, I really, really like Nine Tails X. <laughs> I really like Nine Tails X. It's super duper good. It's just really scary in the Guardy matchup. All right, guys, we're back. Sorry for the cut there, but we're gonna move on. It took me apparently forever and a day to find a match that time. So let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can find another game. I don't know what we're playing against. It looks like we might be playing against Xerneas. Xerneas is kind of rough, but it's definitely manageable. So, his opening hand is weird again. But we can at least turn... We're not going... I want to go first, bro. When can I go first? Let me go first, my dudes. So, we, we can turn one Bridger, right? Which is cool and all. But, like, we don't have a draw supporter. And he's playing Glisspot. So, I mean, he's playing uh, Garbodor. So, I don't know what he's playing. He has these Xerneas sleeves, which are really sick and all. Oh, these are the new ones, aren't they? Yeah, these are the new sleeves from that thing that's $100 that I can't afford, even though I really want it. I really, I really, really want it, though. 
But like, I don't know, I'm in the air about buying those ends because, uh, or at least a playset. Because those stupid new, uh, what's it called, just came out. It's got announced Cynthia, bro. Cynthia, bro. That's so clean. I'm so excited for Cynthia, dude. Cynthia is Professor Oak's new theories. It lets you draw. It lets you uh, shuffle your hand and draw six. So it's essentially better Shauna. And it's really, it's a really good card. We're playing against another. You know what? If I, ha if I, mm, I'd cut this game out if I didn't have to go, guys. But I, I have to actually play. <laughs> I actually have to do stuff today. So that means I actually have to play this stupid game. At least we get to Beacon, right? We can bridge it, beacon, get another Lele, I suppose. <clears throat> I can also just end here if I really wanted to, but I have to get my other Lele. So Bridget gets me one Zorua, or two Volpixes, and, and I can get Lele next turn with the uh, with the beacon. So I guess that's what we're gonna do. I want to get Tapu Koko as well, um, but we have to get our two Volpixes. That's the most important thing. I will just do this. We need DC. We need a lot of things here. We can beacon. We'll get Zork, and I'm gonna get Baby Coco. No, because we don't have Coco down. Maybe I should have got Baby Coco there. I'm gonna get Nine Tails. Yeah, we'll get the Nine Tails. We'll see what my opponent does to see if they can end me or if they can like do something. Because if he ends me, that's fine. I get to put my Rescue Stretchers back in the deck. I don't like having both of these already. Let's see if he gets Lele for Ultra Ball. That'd be ideal for me. Oh, Lele for N, I mean. Actually, maybe considering that I should have played down my tools, but I don't like losing my tools, especially in a Garbodor matchup. Oh, he has that new N. It's so nice. I want it. I want like three. I want a playset, but I can't afford it, sadly. Because they're like 40 bucks a piece if you're lucky. I have like three of the old ends, which I, I want to get rid of so I can get the new ones, but nobody wants to get rid of nobody wants to take them from me. So we have Zorak in hand, which is good. Zorak is just a good early game beat stick, which I do want to take advantage of. Um Do I wanna end? I don't I don't want to uh mm, let's trade. No, I'm gonna end. Cause I kinda wanna Guzma, right, and get a knockout, but that only that's only if I get a DCE and the chances of me getting a DCE are fairly low, so I'm not gonna bother. Just gonna end. I don't want to play too greedy. Oh, they're my DCs, so I guess maybe they weren't that low. <laughs> I want to put everything in range of Nine Tails. I'll trade here. Oh, I got more water energies. So nice. <laughs> yeah, we'll put everything in range of uh, Nine Tails. He he gets a free knockout with Glyph Spot if he gets it, but which is like whatever because I have Floatstone attached already, so it's not a big deal. We have this that can get some knockouts as well. Uh, Choice Band is one fifty. Kikui is one seventy. A one seventy plus thirty is not a knockout yet, unfortunately. So if I can get like one more Flying Flip, it'd be nice, but I'm not gonna be able to. We need E Hammer. Nine Tails in the active is just good because. It means he can't he can't attack me freely without the fear of ice path and he already got in my foot zone so so much for that <laughs> so much for that you can actually armor press which is cool i guess armor press is a good play because it means it's awkward for nine tails to deal with i'm probably will i probably will just attack with zoark though if he ace rollers it's like not the end of the world i guess we have guzma as well so if I really wanted to, if I can get like a choice band or something, I could pretty safely. Oh, and now I have to knock this out. That's so annoying. I could pretty safely, uh, what's it called? Use uh, what's it, whatever it's called. See, the thing is, right now, right, like he has another one right there, so it's gonna be kind of awkward. I really like guard. The glitch spot's so good, and we have sick more now. Mm, it's awkward. It's super awkward. All my abilities, I do. I think I'm better off getting Field Blower. I can't trade though. Do I Sycamore this turn or not? That's the question. Well, I don't want to lose Guzma, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna at least abuse Guzma once. Uh, maybe I should have knocked this out. Oh well, we'll beat. There's another DCE. I hate that I get DCEs early game all the time. I don't want them right now. 
because I don't want to I don't want to attach a DC unless I'm confident in the fact that it's going to be a Nine Tails or something that can attack, right? So if I, I have to now I have the DC in Sycamore, but if I DC Sycamore, I'm not sure if I'm gonna draw Nine Tails or get an Ultra Ball. You know what I mean? Like the the odds are there of me not getting it. So getting okay, ending me is better than me having to Sycamore without the knowledge. That's why you see me attacking. I want to attack the Ninetales because I want to attack with Ninetales. This is amazing. I will take that. Dude, you know what? Short games, we had a really good hand there. We could have mallowed and we had, oh, we had we had Ninetales ready to go and, and everything was in range too. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. All right. Okay, that was that was good. That was a beautiful hand you could have ended me into. So we'll go ahead and get another game. Okay, we are back. This does not have grass in it, so that's really exciting. It might be playing the mirror match, which would be kind of annoying. I don't like playing the mirror match. The mirror match is always bad because I have bad luck, you know what I mean? Like, I can't draw. My opponents always draw what they need, but I can't. Uh, finally a mulligan, and the only time we get to go first. Oh no, it's not a mulligan. We just have a really bad opening hand. Yay. <laughs> oh man, what am I going to do about this? I don't know. Maybe we can get a couple of uh, good cards off the mulligan here. Yeah, we're playing the mirror. That's annoying. And he plays the Potown variant, which is also annoying. The Potown variant is really good in the mirror. I don't like the Potown variant against uh, Guardi, just because uh, there's a lot of healing Guardi out right now with like Diancy and stuff like that, which is uh, super annoying to deal with. I'm glad I have an early game Zoroark. Early game Zoroark is super good. Um, the question is, do I want to bridge it? I think I do want to bridge it, so I think I will bridge it. Um, do I drop? What do I drop? I guess I drop a choice band. I want to keep flow zone. I'd rather keep flow zone over choice band. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, hopefully Lele Bridget. We'll see. Yeah, dope. So we're gonna Lele Bridget here. We can actually fa safely fill up our bench right now. We have Zoark in our hand, and we can get uh, three bull fixes, honestly. I know he has this out, but if I have a full bench, Zorak puts in the mad work right now. Yeah, uh, we could have a Coco down, but um, I don't want to attach anything until the turn I want to attack. I really hope he doesn't end me. I really hope he doesn't end me. But I'm just going to pass here. If he attaches DCE, we also have E-Hammer. So our opening, our opening hand is not awful. It just sucks that we don't have a draw supporter, especially since we're going to be attacking with Zora, this or uh, Zorak. We hit 120, which is beautiful. And I want to get rid of these Cocos before he puts too much damage on my Volpixes. I hate that I have to bridge it here because he gets a lot of damage on the board with Coco. But it's I just got to do it. You know what I mean? I just got to do it. It's got to be done. Apparently, he doesn't have Lele Bridges, so I'll take that. If he can be, if he can be stuck, I'd appreciate it. Don't have DC. With DC. Don't be like me who gets DC all the time early game. I don't want my DCs early game. But right now, it's really nice. Um... He put down the Po Town, which is annoying. Because now this thing's going to be in range when I evolve it. Maybe I can get a Field Blower off the top deck. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Please don't have DC. Please with the DC. If you have the DC, it's fine. Because like him getting early game not Nine Tails is not the easiest thing to do. I'll tell you that right now. Because usually you want to be attacking with other Pokemon before you attack with Nine Tails. While you set up Nine Tails in the back. So, if we can... I mean, the good thing about Po Town, right, is that he also has to deal with Po Town. Glaceon's whatever. I can I can knock out Glaceon with Lele. That's not a big deal. He also has to deal with Po Town, and him having to deal with Po Town means that I also get things in range. So, um, that's pretty good for me. He's gonna start aqua patching. He's gonna start attaching to this. Will he retreat into it? I guess we can find out. I mean, if he he can't really safely do that right now, because even if he does, like he can't attack me this turn. I guess he can second bite me right now if he really wants to. He didn't manually attach for the turn, so he, I guess technically he could Crystal Ray if he could get an attachment. So now I have to attack with Lele, huh? So, so much for Zoark attacking. <gasps> Beautiful. Beautiful. Do I, wanna, I don't want to drop anything, though. I think I'm just going to attack with Lele. Maybe I shouldn't have evolved. Um, I could Mallow right now to get Sycamore. Because if he ends me, it's whatever. 
I don't like using Mallow though. All right, here's here. I think I will use Mallow. I don't think I'll trade, but I think I will use Mallow. I'll use Mallow to give me um, Sycamore and Field Blower. We have all of our things. So we want the first card we draw Sycamore. Then we can Field Blower the following turn. But right now we're gonna go ahead and put some big damage on this thing. Pretty much putting it in range of a uh, snipe attack. Not quite, but almost. I could have got Guzma as well, but I knew he wouldn't be able to uh, end me. So I really wanted to draw as many cards as I could. And that's another Potown gone. So all the Potown guns, all the Potowns as po all the Potowns being gone as early as possible is good for me. Uh, hopefully he does evolve because that would put me in range without me having to play Coco, which would be just so nice, so nice. Uh, and I think I will manually retreat the Lele without uh, without attaching the Floatstone. Let's see if he has another Water Energy in hand. I don't think he does. Yes, he evolved. Evolve the other one, please. Just evolve them all. Evolve them before I evolve so I can Potown and be, in, be have the advantage. So I can Field Blower and have the advantage. Oh, it's going to be so nice. It's going to be so nice. I'm going to love it. It's going to be great. <laughs> Second Bite for 70 damage. That's a lot of damage. Um... Yeah, because I am probably just going to manually retreat something. So I'll play this down on this, because this can actually attack, so that's why I don't mind. I hate that I'm losing Sycamore here. Um, or I'm losing E-Hammer here, but we're just going to Sycamore. We can't evolve yet, so I'm going to hold on to this. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we can get a knockout here. Do I trade? I think I trade. Because I could love, I would love to be able to evolve right now. Because these things are in a risky place. Unfortunately, we do not. We have ends though, which is good. But we're just going to get our knockout here. Two prizes. Easy money. Don't play Glacier on your Nine Tails list, guys. I'll tell you that right now. Lele, if, as long as Lele exists, it is not a good card. So this thing has got to go. Which means I need to get Nine Tails with... A lot of stuff. Like I need DCE, two Aqua Patches, another Water Energy in a discard pile, and I'll be in a really good place. I can't just recklessly attack this Pokemon either, because um, if I do, I'm in a bad position. 170 will not be enough for me to knock it out with this. So I need to get. I might even stick him right here. To be honest, does he knock me out here? Oh, he does. He does exactly enough to knock me out, actually. I don't have any free retreat either. Oh, I wish you. Oh, why did you get that choice ban, man? That's awkward. That's super awkward. All right, so we're gonna have to stick more, I think, this turn. Yeah, it's looking like we're gonna have to stick more this turn. We have two more float stones up in the deck, assuming they're not prized. Um, but it's looking like we're gonna have to stick more. Everything gets knocked out, so maybe it's better to go into a Vulpix. Field Blower, these two, so we don't take any of the negatives of the thing. Please, I hope I select them. Okay, cool, I select them both. Sometimes I get worried that I miss the selection button. Uh, we can actually Ultra Ball here for Volp for the thing. So we'll start with that. Oh, you know what? I should have put Espeon back in the deck. Oh, well. Uh, we'll go ahead and get Nine Tails, number one. Uh, do I do the thing? I do, because it's just Lele. Lele in the de in the deck is always beautiful, so we'll go ahead and put the Lele back. I hate that I'm losing almost all my ends here, but this is better than nothing. Okay, Aqua Patches. Nope, we whipped all the Aqua Patches, unfortunately. But we can still trade. Maybe we can get two Aqua Patches off of this, <laughs> maybe. Um, if not, we can just beacon here. There's an Aqua Patch. Oh man, we were so close. Unfortunate, but we were super close. Um, one attachment is good. He might go the... He might go the Ice Path route. He won't, he'll be wasting it. I mean, not wasting it, but he won't, he won't get a knockout that way, which is good for me. Uh, is there anything else I want to do? I can get the second Zoark so I can keep getting consistency here. Which is kind of what I want to do. So we're going to get Zoark and we're going to get 
baby knight tails. Just to kind of scare my opponent. We get baby tails. We have Guzma in hand. I don't want him to end me now, but if he does, it's not the end of the world, I guess. I just don't want to play stuff until the turn. I'm going to get an attack off. I, I have one more end left in the, left in the deck. One more sick more left in the deck. He's going to ace a Rolla, which is super awkward for me. Um, if he can get a knockout this turn, that wouldn't be bad. I'll say that right now, because uh, I could get Lele into... I, could, I have the potential to get Lele into stuff. Oh, but he has Coco, which means spread damage is annoying. And he has another one of those. Ah, <sighs> yikes. Alright, so we'll go ahead and get a knockout with, um... Is, uh, did he put Choice Band back into his hand? I don't remember if he had Choice Band attached. I don't think he did. <clears throat> I guess I'll get a Zoric knockout. It's not the best, but it's not the worst either. Uh, Baby Tails is pretty safe so far. No need for me to trade anything right now. We'll just keep getting our knockouts while we can. Because I might want to manually attach an Aqua Patch, you know what I mean? So, Guzmas are just super duper good. Uh, Field Blower is really good. Uh, it's a little bit too late for it. I knew it was prized, which is why I didn't evolve, which is why I just um, evolved. Because, you know, why wouldn't I just evolve? There's no reason for me not to at that point. Coco is gone. I think he has two DCEs gone now. So, no, that's his first DC. So, we got to be careful about that. He shouldn't be able to get any knockouts, though. Unless he gets, like, a crazy, like, two Aqua Patches, DC attachment, uh, Float Stone, like I've been trying to do. Uh, <laughs> he shouldn't be able to get a knockout. He doesn't have any draw support in his hand, in this field, either. So, this can get another knockout here if we wanted to. And then we can kind of set up the board. Like, right now, we need Kikui, right? And we have both... We have a Kikui in the deck. So... Kui will get us a knockout on Ninetales from full, so I'm trying to wait for me to get that. I could keep trading until I do get it, which would not be a bad play. But I don't know if that's a play I want to make. Let's see what he does. With Ninetales, you have to play the slow game. Because there's so many things you can do, but if you if you use up your cards in the wrong place, you're kind of in trouble. And there's another Coco. That's another threat to me. Will he attack with it, though? I don't mind if he uses up his DCs. At this point, it doesn't matter because I'm in range of everything anyways. I don't like being end, but I have two Zoroarks on the field. So, um, we can trade a bunch. And we have a bunch of cards I want to trade as well. I could evolve this. I don't really see the point in it, though. There's Baby Tails. Baby Tails is kind of annoying. Uh, we have our own Baby Tails, which can actually knock it out now, as long as we get DCE Aqua Patch, which is pretty good. We also have Guzma in hand, so... Oh, there's DCE. Let's see if we can uh, get some delicious trades going. We have a lot of options right now that are just completely opened up to us. Oh, man. Uh, we have Rescue Stretchers in the deck, right? We got one more. I'll trade this. Okay, that's good. Uh, we can knock out a Coco. Or we can just attack with this. <sighs> See, if I retreat, I lose my DCE. So I think I'm going to attack the Coco first. Do I want to do that? Hmm a lot of options here and i don't know what the best options are see I, I can just knock this out now though which is a huge threat to me i'm just gonna knock it out now this thing is such a huge threat it just sucks i don't have another attacker ready but the second he gets a knockout i'm in a decent position i just hate this i can't guzma because the nine tails is already active so we'll just get our knockout here so now he doesn't have any volpixes left in the field He's down to a low hand size. We can attack this. I got a message on Facebook. Probably Steven asking if we can hit it up today. Or something like that. Um, it's my boy. Yeah. Thank you, friend. 
trying my best to get some codes, or we're working together to get codes for the channel. He has Orenguru. Alright, so. Now we can actually retreat the, the nine tails. I don't know how many DCs we have left. We have one on the active, one on the field. We only have one DCE left. Uh, we already used up our Mallow. But we still have Guzma. So we'll float stone on the board. We have field blower to get rid of this if we need to. Not like we need to anymore, but it's an option. If he gets a knockout, we have Lele to give me Kikui. Um. Oh yeah, but by, by the way, shout out to Ty. Me and Ty hit it up. Uh, me and Ty hit it up yesterday. We went to a league cup, a uh, league challenge uh, together yesterday, and uh, who I played Decidueye Zoar because you guys know how much I love it. Dude, I played against Nine Tails with my with my buddy Devin in the finals, and my God, I had all four Ultra Balls in the deck, and no matter how much I traded and Sycamore didn't end, I couldn't find them. So I was never able to get out Espeon for game, even though his all of his guardies had like a hundred, like all three of his guardies had like a hundred plus damage on them at all times because of my Decidueyes. And he couldn't get knockouts, but eventually he got to a point because I kept whiffing Espeon and couldn't safely attach energies to my Decidueye to get knockouts or Zoarx to get knockouts because they would get knocked down in return. He eventually ended up having eight energies on a Guardian to start sweeping my board because I couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> There's his flip. Uh, we can retreat, we can Guzma. Depends on what we can get off these cards though. First things first, let's trade one. Trade this. I want a Guzma for game. Okay, we have an option here. If I can get one more energy attached when I win the game, right? So I have choice man. All right, cool. So all we have to do is trade again. And not whiff it. Let's whiff it. <laughs> Let's not whiff it, please. Just an energy, single energy. Mm, we whiffed it. Unfortunate, but we whiffed it. I can't play down cards because at any given moment he's going to be able to blow me away so unfortunately we whiffed it and because we whiffed it we can't do much this turn um yeah that sucks aurora beam he has espion down and even though he could potentially devolve me and get multi knockouts i guess he can get like two prizes right now if he were to retreat but all we need is an energy. We're going to draw four cards next turn. Not... Oh, my God. Okay, we have Aqua Patch in the deck. We have two Guzmas in the deck. We have three Aqua Patches in the deck. We have one DCE and, like, six at five energies left. Come on. Luckily... He got this knockout here, which is annoying. Well, I can't play N. I have to play Guzma. So we're going to have to start trading. Trade the Choice Band because we don't really need it anymore. If I can just get Guzma and a manual attachment. Thank you. Thank you. God, please. That was ridiculous, man. Sometimes Nine Tails is my best friend, and sometimes we just... I mean, right there, I mean, Nine Tails did come through for me, to be honest. But there we go. We can Blizzard Edge for game now. Something worth mentioning, though, is that even if we couldn't Blizzard Edge for game, I could have uh, Ice Pathed to prevent this from being knocked out. So that he couldn't devolve me for like multiple knockouts that turn. But that's going to be the video, guys. It's not as long as I was hoping it would be. I mean, for you guys, it's not that long. But I've been recording it for an hour and six minutes. An hour and seven minutes now. So, <laughs> uh, so unfortunately, I have to run. I got stuff to do today. But thank you guys all so much for watching. Um, drop a like if you have not already. Oh, it's right here. Subscribe, Charlotte. Good job, Jess. I do like the deck list. Maybe it is worth putting back the Sycamore like the four of Sycamore, just so I can draw a little bit more. But there's so many times I just don't want to Sycamore. So like, I don't really want to put it back in the deck. Also, I don't know what to drop. I could drop Mallow. Uh, Lucid is super duper clutch in this in these games. And as you can see, you see what I mean by like how important the float zones are? Like, I, I, I'm, I'm like driving that in. I know a lot of you guys understand because a lot of my, a lot of the people that watch my videos are very, very intelligent. And you guys understand what I'm talking about. But um, for those of you that like, there's, I have always people asking me, pestering me, like, drop the flow stones. Guzma exists. Drop the flow stones. Guzma exists. It's like, boy, why would you want to play Guzma if you're not getting a knockout? All right. Don't just play Guzma to switch. That's dumb. <laughs> um, other than that, though, I don't know if I like Zoark over Octillery. I really, really like Zorak because it can attack, and in this deck, you're going to have a huge board, a lot. So doing 120, 150, 170 is really good numbers. So I'm going to probably keep the Zorak and just keep testing it over and over again until I figure out what I like. A card that you could add in this deck uh, that people don't really talk about is Latios. And because I play a 3 of Floatstone count, it wouldn't be awful in this deck, but 
Cocos are there for the retreat and it puts things in range of nine tails. So like if you're playing Latios, Latios is kind of like its own attacker that can get knockouts, but you don't really like you you can you can um you can set up your board to get non knockouts with nine tails with 20 damage on the board instead of just 30. You know what I mean? So that's why I don't play this uh Latios right now. I'm only playing the Zoark. I mean the uh Coco. Uh two rescue shedders, super important. I like that. Two field blowers, super important. Garbodor is annoying. You can even see how annoying Garbodor was just based off like draw support alone. That's why I play two field blowers. Uh, three Guzmas is perfect. I'm glad there's only three. Uh, and I'm not glad there's only three. I want to play a fourth one, but I haven't had any difficulties getting Guzmas. So I'm I'm glad there's only two Lele's though. I'm just talking to myself. Lusamine is cool, right? Because Lusamine, you can put any two supporters back into your deck. So you don't really lower the count of supporters you have here. But it just gives you a little bit more consistency consistency because as you guys saw there's a lot of turns when you're playing nine tails that you're just not really doing anything but attacking right because you don't have to every turn you don't have to do something you're you're you kind of like check off your you go to your checklist and start checking things off right did you attach for the turn okay cool that's it because <laughs> if you attach for the turn if you're progressing your board state by putting damage in the right places uh if you're getting knockouts then you're fine. You don't have to like dig to like, oh, I have to make sure I have all these cards ready. I have to attach these energies because if you start attaching too much, uh, your opponent can very easily knock out nine tails if they have any spread damage on it. If they're playing Guardi, if there's, there's a lot of matchups where they can just kind of like put damage on you. So you can't always just recklessly attach, attach Aqua Patch every turn because you want to save your Aqua Patch for later in the game. As you guys saw, we did that. We had very little cards left in our hand in our deck. We had three Aqua Patches in there, and that's what helped us win that game. We manual attach Aqua Patch. Guzma, boom. That's what happens when you don't play too aggressively. And this is the kind of deck that you don't want to play too aggressively with. I'm like talking too much, whatever. Regardless, drop a like if you haven't already. Subscribe, show all the good jazz. Hope you guys are having an excellent Halloween. I'm going to see if I can build something with Gengar, I guess. I don't know. I'll probably do it on stream or something. But regardless, drop a like, subscribe, show all the good jazz, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.